The film begins with the scene of Jenny and her friend Paula, who works as a flight attendant on a flight in Los Angeles, seems to be in a hurry to go to work because she just finished watching a concert that afternoon. They finally arrive at the airport, and when Jenny and Paula are tidying up on the plane, a co-pilot who seems unwell arrives. He says he might have caught a dog's disease from his complex, because for some reason all the dogs there are sick. Then Jenny is introduced to a kid named George, who is left by his parents to fly alone to his home, and Jenny is appointed to take care of the child. One by one, the passengers start boarding the plane, starting with an old man suffering from Parkinson's disease, then a man who acts cool in front of the flight attendants, and also a man named Henry with a cat cage that he will keep in the cabin of the plane. He says it is a hamster for the children, but he seems to have a little trouble putting the cage in. Then the cool man helps him, but he is bitten by something inside the cage. Eventually, the cage is stored in the luggage compartment of the plane. Soon after, the plane takes off, and at optimal altitude, the passengers start doing their activities. However, there is a passenger making a phone call on the plane, and because it's dangerous, he is reprimanded by Jenny. But he is stubborn and keeps calling until his phone is taken away by Henry. He gets angry and almost starts a fight. Because of the incident, Jenny and Henry start getting to know each other. The cool man calls Jenny and asks her for a glass of water. There seems to be something strange with the cool man. After that, Jenny sees Henry watching something on his laptop. She asks him what he's watching, and Henry says he is looking at news about the CDC isolating an apartment in Los Angeles. In short, Jenny sees the cool man in a strange condition. She tries to greet him, and the cool guy vomits, apparently drunk. He wants to get off the plane, and then a cat from one of the passengers eats the vomit from the cool man. The scene shifts when Jenny finishes cleaning up the vomit. Suddenly, the cool man starts banging on the door, causing everyone to panic and try to calm the increasingly aggressive cool man. The pilot contacts the nearest airport for an emergency landing. The pilot is asked about the symptoms experienced by the cool man, and it seems they are also cautious about this issue. When the landing is near, there is a severe shake. Paula and Jenny take the initiative to lift the cool man to a seat. Suddenly, an unexpected event occurs. Paula is bitten on the face and bleeds profusely. The cool man is then confined in the airplane's toilet. Paula, injured, is treated by a passenger named Sheila, who is a paramedic. She provides first aid, but when the plane lands, none of the terminals will open their doors for them. Everything is closed and deserted. Then, they see an airport worker and ask for help to get off the plane. After the door is opened, all passengers rush out, while the pilot and co-pilot still restrain the raging cool man. However, the terminal door to the airport is locked. The worker named Ed looks for another way out. It turns out all doors are locked and they can't go anywhere. Then a siren sounds from outside the building, causing panic. They urge Jenny to find a solution. She plans to return to the plane to look for the pilot and a Sheila's bag to treat Paula. Jenny, along with some passengers, cautiously goes back to the plane, which is now quiet and empty. They are shocked to find the bathroom empty and the cool man gone. Suddenly, they discover the elderly man left behind, pointing to the broken restraints of the cool man. They quickly grab their belongings from the luggage, noticing Henry's cat cage is open and its contents have escaped. One passenger takes out a gun for protection. Jenny successfully retrieves the medical bag, but then they are attacked by rats that have escaped from the cat cage. As Jenny exits the luggage area, a zombified pilot attacks Jenny. Fortunately, the zombified pilot is shot and kills him. They find the elderly man again, but another passenger becomes a victim. Something lurks in the darkness. One, the passengers become a zombie. They hold the door shut, and after being trapped, they start arguing, assuming the symptoms resemble rabies. During the argument, the elderly man is bitten by one of the rats. Soon after, Ed and Henry manage to capture the rat. 
The elderly man's fate is unfortunate. He must be confined because he might be infected. Later, Ed examines the rat and notices a tag on its leg, indicating it might be a lab rat. George begins to suspect that Henry is the cause of all this because he brought the rats in the cage. Hearing this, Jenny tries to talk to Henry. But Jenny, being naive, believes Henry's words. As they embrace, the cool man returns in a rage. They come to the rescue and the cool man is subdued using a cable. Shortly after, some CDC officers enter. They seem pleased, but they have to undergo several health protocols. They inject something into the victims and ask everyone to be injected if they want to leave. But only Louise, the elderly woman, dares to do it while carrying her beloved cat. As she is about to be injected, her cat bites Louise's neck. Perhaps it's because of the vomit from the cool man. Now the paralyzed elderly man has also become a zombie, and the remaining CDC officers try to escape. As they exit, they hear something approaching. They quickly take refuge in a food truck, but the man accompanying the pregnant woman is already infected. The woman is pulled to release the infected man, but the woman is eventually attacked by the man. Inside, they interrogate the remaining CDC officer, who finally speaks up and explains that it all started with a quarantine in an apartment in Los Angeles, where the top floor was turned into an experimental lab. They suspect terrorists are behind the spread of the virus worldwide. After the explanation, he snatches a gun and kills himself. They plan to escape through the sewage system. While Ed is explaining, suddenly a zombie appears. George quickly presses a button, and the infected person is crushed to death. They rush to escape, but Henry suddenly disappears. They are caught by zombies and as Jenny walks, they confront the zombified Paula. They fight with zombified Paula and manage to push zombified Paula to her death. Knowing the end is near, they head to the office to find the airport layout, while George rummages through Henry's bag and finds evidence about the virus. When they locate the airport layout, another zombies appear. But the zombies are shot by Henry, who appears to be wounded. George reassures him saying he'll be okay because he has the antidote. Henry threatens George to hand over the antidote at gunpoint. When Ed tries to attack Henry, his attempt fails and he is shot and killed. Then he uses the antidote. Afterward, he takes George hostage and escape. Jenny and Sheila try to chase them down, but another zombie appears and after conquering the zombie, Jenny meets Sheila, who has the night vision and hands it over to her. Since she's been bitten, she gives Jenny time to escape by using herself as bait. Jenny then confronts Henry again. Eventually, Jenny finds George, but he warns her not to come closer, as Henry has turned into a monster. Fortunately, George shoots the monster, but it doesn't die from the gunshot. Jenny then bludgeons it with a wrench until it stops moving. They return to escape, but the government seems to have decided to destroy the terminal. The fire ignites, threatening to burn them until Jenny breaks down a door, urging George to escape first. They crawl through the darkness, and suddenly Jenny realizes she's been bitten while fighting the zombified Henry. She tells George to keep moving as her condition worsens. As they reach the end of the corridor, George calls out to Jenny, who has now turned into a zombie. Reluctantly, George must leave alone, never forgetting Jenny's sacrifice and the movie ends with George now living alone with nowhere to go. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video.